Hello students, I am Sanjana Kavati, Assistant Professor, Department of Computer Science and Engineering, AITM Belgavi. In this video, I will be starting with module number 5, Basic Processing Unit. So, in this module, uh, we will be focusing on the processing unit which executes the machine instructions and which coordinates the uh, activities of other units. So, in the, this unit is also called as inst Instruction Set Processor, that is ISP instruction set processor or you can also call it as a just a processor so uh, we will examine its internal structure and uh, how it performs the tasks like fetching decoding and executing the instructions of a program and uh, uh, this processing unit can also be called as central processing unit that is cpu uh, so the term central uh, is less appropriate because many modern computer systems include several processing unit because we will be having multiple processes in the computer so central doesn't give a much appropriate meaning here okay uh, so the organization of processor has evolved over the years which are dri dri driven by developments in technology as well as the need to provide high performance to the market so a common strategy in the development of high performance processor is to make various functional units operate operating in parallel as much as possible so the high pro high performance processes have pipeline organization where the execution of one instruction is started before the execution of the pre preceding instruction is been completed okay so uh, in other approach uh, it is also known as super scalar operation uh, in which several instructions are fetched and executed at the same time okay uh, we are also going to study pipelining and uh, super scalar architectures which are given in the uh, next chapter uh, we will be studying it in the later part of this module so and uh, basically in this uh, we will be concentrate concentrating more on the basic ideas that are all common to the most of the processor so a uh, typical computing task consisting of a series of steps specified by sequence of machine instructions that is going to constitute a program so an instruction is executed by carrying out a sequence of more uh, rudimentary operations these operations and uh, the mean uh, the mean so by which they are controlled are the uh, main topic what we are going to concentrate here first we shall start with some fundamental concepts so as we all know that to execute a program the processor fetches one instruction at a time and performs the operations that is specified in the instruction so the instructions are fetched from successive memory locations until a branch or a jump instruction is encountered so the processor keeps track of the address of the memory location containing the next instruction to be fetched using the program counter that is pc okay so after fetching an instruction uh, the contents of PC are updated to point to the next instruction in the sequence. So then a branch instruction may, may load a different value into the program counter. Next, uh, another key register in the processor is the instruction register that is IR. Suppose that each instruction comprises 4 bytes and that it is, it is stored in one memory word. Okay, so we all know that one word consists of 4 memory bytes. So, to execute an instruction, the processor has to perform the following basic three steps. The first step is fetch the contents of the memory location pointed to by the program counter. Then, the contents of this location are interpreted as an instruction to be executed. Hence, they are loaded into instruction register that is IR. Symbolically, this can be written as uh, PC will be written into the square brackets which is pointing to the the arrow mark is pointing to IR which means what the contents that is pointed to by the uh, pointer of program counter the contents of this location will be interpreted as the instruction so that we assume that the instruction is stored into the PC value because PC will be always pointing to the next instruction to be executed so that contents of that particular uh, position or uh, memory location we can say that is nothing but the instruction to be executed okay and this will be loaded to IR. Okay. Now next, the second step is assuming that memory is byte addressable. Uh, we are going to increment the contents of PC by four. Okay. That is 
now once we are fetching the data from pc what the pc will do pc will uh, pc should point to the next instruction to be executed and we assume that the memory is byte addressable and hence uh, pc we are going to increment it by 4 bytes that means uh, why we are incremented by 4 it means uh, we are assuming that uh, the instruction that we are fetching is of 4 memory bytes the size of that instruction is 4 bytes ok so pc equal to pc plus 4 the pc is next pointing uh, to the next location which is after 4 bytes of the previous location ok ne now next the third step is carry out the actions specified by the instruction in the IR that means next we are going to execute the instruction Now, in cases where an instruction occupies more than one word, step 1 and 2 must be repeated as many times as necessary to fetch the complete instruction. Okay, So, these two steps are usually referred to as the fetch phase. Uh, the step 3 constitutes the execution phase. First two are fetch phase only. The next last third step is execution phase. Uh, to study these operations in detail, first we need to examine the internal organization of the processor okay so how the internal components are arranged in the processor so the main building block of a processor uh, that we have studied in the first chapter okay uh, they can be organized in and interconnected in a variety of ways so we will start with a simple organization so later we will study uh, more complex structures and uh, that provide high performance okay now see this figure it shows an organization of uh, single bus okay within the processor so the figure that is shown here it is figure 7.1 from the textbook so it shows an organization uh, in which the arithmetic and logical unit that is ALU and all the resistors are interconnected via a single common bus so this bus is internal to the processor and uh, should not confuse get confused with the external bus that is connecting the processor to the memory and io devices okay so this is internal bus which is present within the processor uh, the bus that connects the processor to the memory as well as uh, to the io devices that is called as external bus okay don't get confused with this now you can see uh, the figure uh, we have internal processor bus to which multiple resistors and ALU instruction decoder and control logic IR various other general purpose resistors are connected to it ok uh, the data and address lines of the external memory bus uh, are shown in the figure that are connected to the internal processor via uh, internal processor bus via the memory data register okay that is MDR and the memory address register that is MAR respectively so the register MDR has two inputs and two outputs uh, they may uh, they may be loaded into MDR either from the memory bus or from the internal processor bus okay so then uh, the data stored in the MDR may be placed onto either of the bus okay uh, so that is the data whatever is stored in the MDR since it is memory data register that data is going to be present uh, placed on the bus then the input of MAR is connected to the internal bus and its output is connected to the external bus ok so the control lines of the memory bus are also connected to the instruction decoder and control logic block and uh, this unit is responsible for issuing the signals that control the operation of all the units inside the processor and for interacting with the memory bus so it is like a control unit for the processor now okay so it is going to uh, it, it issues the signals which are going to control the operation of all the units inside the processor and for uh, also interacting with the memory bus okay uh, so then uh, the number and the use of the processor registers are not through r of n minus 1 are very uh, considerably from one processor to another processor ok so that is R0 to or Rn-1 ok so they vary depending on the processor so registers may be provided for general purpose use by the programmer 
Some may be decided as special purpose registers such as index register or stack pointers. So the other three registers X, uh, Y, Z and temp which is shown in the figure have not been mentioned before. So these registers are transparent to the programmer that is the programmer need not be concerned with them because they are never referenced explicitly by an instruction that is going to be executed. So they are used by the processor for temporary storage during the execution of some instructions. So these three registers that is Y, Z, temp these are only used for temporary purpose like uh, in solving or in executing any of the program they may be you they may be used for temporary storage okay so these are not going to be used by externally or uh, the user programs are not going to be using these things these are only internal to the processor so the registers are never used for storing data generated by one instruction for later use by another instruction so the data that that is going to be stored in this is not long lasting so it is uh, we are not, never going to store the information or uh, the data which is generated by one instruction and uh, if it is that uh, if it is of that importance the other instruction will be using it so such data will not be stored into these registers next uh, the multiplexer mux represented as mux it selects either of the input register y or a constant value 4 to be provided as input a of the alu then uh, the constant 4 is used to increment the contents of the program counter uh, then uh, we will refer to the two possible values of the mux control input uh, select as select 4 and select y for selecting the constant 4 and register y respectively ok select 4 is for uh, selecting the constant 4 and register y is for selecting the uh, uh, sorry select y is for uh, selecting the register y ok so uh, then uh, an instruction execution progresses as instruction uh, ex execution goes on data are transformed uh, transferred from uh, one register to another register after passing through the ALU to perform some arithmetic as well as logic operation. So the instruction decoder as well as the control unit control logic unit is responsible for implementing implementing the actions that are specified by the instruction loaded in the IR register IR register okay that is instruction register and then the decoder will generate the control signal that is needed to select the register that are involved and direct the transfer of data the registers the ALU and the interconnecting bus are collectively referred to as the data path okay so registers ALU as well as the interconnecting bus which are all together called as uh, data path okay so uh, with few of the exceptions an instruction can be executed by performing one or more uh, of the following operations in some specified sequence okay so first is transfer a word of data from one processor processor register to another or to the ALU then uh, perform an arithmetic or a logic operation and store the result in a processor register next is fetch the contents of a given memory location and load them into a processor register last is store a word of data from the processor register into a given memory location okay so these are the uh, uh, steps that are going to be used while executing an instruction okay so this this is the sequence of a operations that are going to be followed next in the upcoming uh, uh, next in the upcoming videos we shall see in detail how each of these operations is implemented using the simple processor model that we have shown in the figure keep watching thank you